<laughs> yes. yes. But like, the comparison like with me and some of the other So that'd be something neat to see, you know, the Harry Sanders at The Pirates playing in, in Williams. Welcome to the Knowledge Sports Podcast, episode 47, the home of sports talk for everyone. I'm David. I'm Jason. Welcome aboard. So a lot of a lot of big baseball news has happened so far this uh, this week alone, with uh, the Phillies getting rid of uh, Joe Girardi as of uh, June third, and Joe Madden gone as of June seventh. Yeah, and heads are rolling. Uh, this, yeah, I mean, this the last two weeks here in baseball. I mean, how can you have? two teams with the amount of talent as the angels and the Phils, and underperform as, as much as you are. I mean, and, and this speaks volumes for the AL West that the angels could have a 14 game losing streak and stay in second place. Um, but still that's a 14 game losing streak. You have with gener two generational talents on your roster. The Phils never seem to really get going this season. Um, well, it just seems especially to be a after, silly thing. Especially after doling out two big contracts to Castellanos and Schwarber, it just seemed like they, they just couldn't get out of the gate. Uh, and they went a really long losing streak, too. Um, and it's pretty, I mean, I, I'm a Phillies fan. Everyone listening knows that. Um, and I, I mentioned this on the Philly Baseball Together pod. Uh, that it was a little bittersweet because when Joe got hired at the end of the 2019 season, there was a lot of hope. There was a lot of trust. We kind of thought that this was the guy who was going to make it happen for the Phils. Like he was that missing puzzle piece. And then by the end, we were, I mean, I've even said to you, like, they just need to do something. They need to get rid of him. Something has to happen. Um, well, the thing was, though, from everything I've heard uh, about about Joe Girardi was that he takes he makes the players accountable, but it just seems like the more it went on, the less that's happened. And I've had uh, a guy at work; he said the same thing, and it's like it just stopped happening. It just all of a sudden now. Like, you know, like you said, he was supposed to, you know, be that guy to take us to the next, you know, to take the Phillies to the next level. But once again, falling short, way so this short. Is, so this is something that that Tori and I talked about. Um, so anyone who might have listened to that, it might be a little redundant to them. But our audience is a little bit wider than the Philly Baseball Together pod. Um, we. We look at Girardi as a top-level manager, but we need to remember that Girardi inherited Joe Torre's team. He inherited a Yankees team that, you know, you had guys that were already on there for 10-plus years by the time Girardi got on the team as the manager. So, I mean, there were actually guys on the team that he played with when they won the World Series. Like, he inherited an already good team. He was inheriting a mess with the Phils. So... Is that what we're going to call that one, a mess? That's what we're going to call it, yeah. Okay. So we... <laughs> is he... Was he really a good manager, or did he just happen to be in the right place at the right time with the Yankees? Um, he, he was never under 500 as a Yankees manager. Um... He only had one season just barely – he had two seasons just barely over 500. Um, I don't know. No, no, I, no, feel, there, I feel bad for the guy. I, I legitimately feel bad for the guy. Here would be the perfect test to see how good a manager actually is. Have him manage the fills for a season, see how you do. Because of the of – the, well, do you want to call it a dumpster fire? Um, for when he for, the, for when he first came in, I think the phrase I've been using is uh, the Phils are a Frankenstein's monster. 
because uh, they're trying to cobble pieces together to create a, a, a good team. <laughs> um, and here's the thing. The Phils have the talent. They have they the talent to be a very good team. Defensively, there's going to be some struggles, but we haven't seen a lot of those since they've been winning, which goes back to something that Charlie Manuel had said uh, leading up to this season where when a team's winning, they don't have time to think about their defensive struggles. They're just playing the game. When they're not winning, all they're focusing on is the struggles, and that's making it worse. So his whole theory is when they're winning, they're playing better. You're not going to see those struggles. You're only going to see those struggles when they're losing because they're focusing on them. I can see that. And this team looks better. They seem looser. And I honestly think Girardi lost the team at some point. Yeah, I agree with that. Because and it had they, to have been it, some point in between the first week of the season and spring training. It just seems like they just stopped responding to him all of a sudden. It's just like, okay, now we're done. It's basically what it seemed like. And, and you could see it in their body language. Like, it wasn't even something as as a, a regular viewer of the games I even noticed until after the fact. Like, you go back and you look at some of these clips – and this isn't a confident. It wasn't a confident team. They weren't carrying themselves like they're the players that they are. It, it just they just didn't look like they didn't want to be there. And now he's gone, and this is a whole other team. And they have dare I say there's some s- swagger, there's confidence, um, and I think Bryce had a really good point uh, when he was talking about Bryce and Stott. He's like, it's giving, you got to give the young guys time to play to see what they can do. Almost hinting that maybe Girardi was holding some of these players back. And I mean, I think they've been rewarded. Bohm's gotten better. Stott's getting really good. Um, well, and these young guys off. are just going to, and, and and look at who they're surrounded by. They're surrounded by multi-time All-Stars in, in Bryce. And, and Schwarber, Schwarber's a World Series champion. Castellanos is a big name. You got a guy like JT, JT who might be struggling at the plate this year, but he's still a, an elite defender as a catcher. You have a lot of baseball knowledge in that locker room. And these guys are going to get better, I, th- I would say, just from being around it. Um, yeah, I agree. Yeah, because if, well, like you said, if he, if he was holding back a lot of the talent that we're seeing, we're starting to see, then, yeah, that's why the Phillies would be down the dumps at that time, you know, during his reign, you know, or I should say during his era, because he's not letting, like you said, bring that talent up, because who knows? We could have, you know, somebody coming up, being called up, could just be that player that just kind of sparks the team into doing great. Right, and you don't know, and that's... That's any sport, sadly. You don't know who it the is any sport. player yeah. is that could could spark something. Now, with with Joe Madden, I would say, and, and this kind of ties in with Girardi, I think not every manager can come back at a certain age and still be effective. Not everyone is a Dusty Baker. <laughs> not everyone is a Buck Showalter. Uh, Showalter's having a great season with the Mets right now. Um, and I think he kind of got a raw deal at the end there with the O's, but that's a whole other topic for later in the episode. Um, (laughs) I I just wonder maybe if Madden's time has passed and the same with maybe Girardi, maybe that maybe unfortunately their time has passed and it's time for them to move on from the game. Um, I mean, well, since, I mean, since Girardi is being let go, I mean, the Phillies just finished and, so far, an eight-game winning streak, just getting back to 500. Woo, 500. That's... I know, right? Hey, at this point for the Phillies, that's a looking up. At this point. And the Angels had their 14-game losing streak snapped. <laughs> they did. Um, 14 games, that's... Ugh. It's got to be... I, we always joke that it's tough to be a Phillies fan. It's got to be really tough to be an Angels fan, to have have Otani, to have 
to have Trout and to have nothing to show for it. Well, it's just like how we said before in the show, all that talent, like, you know, like in hockey with the Rangers in the 90s, you had Gretzky, Yager, Lindros, and still couldn't bring home a Stanley Cup. Well, I would say I would use that comparison more for the Phils than I would the Angels because well, either way, Trout I mean, came up in their farm system. The Phils bought Bryce, they bought yeah. Castellanos, they well, bought though, JT, they bought. It's the same concept, though. I mean, you have all these players and still couldn't bring anything home. So, you so know, only I, one team has a winning streak longer than the Phils right now, and it is the Atlanta Braves the team that they have to try and surpass to get into second place? Only by one. You know, they won nine. Philly's just won eight. But the I thing is, though... I can't pull up a, a wild card yet. But the thing is, though, I mean... It's... Okay, Philly's just hit 500. The Braves are only, what, five games up? Yeah, you know, five games over 500. Yeah. So, I mean, it could easily happen. I mean, a team, you know, the streaks go, you know, either way. Like the Mets just have it, you know, they have a two game losing streak now. So, who knows what's going to happen at this point? But with, like you said, will both players find find somewhere else to, to go to, who knows? Should they hang it up? Have they passed their primes? That's a very good I'm question. I'm just saying, it seems like those two, the two of them specifically, the two Joes, maybe aren't as effective as they used to be. Well, and, like and, you said, one's, and, one inherited a team, the other one, you know, when he was with, the, you know, when, when Jari was with the Yankees, he inherited the team. Right. Where, where here, but he actually had, had the advantage. But, let, but we have to acknowledge that he did have to do something to get them to that World Series because they only won one under him. Yeah. And, you know, Madden, he did wonders with the Rays because he, he was the guy managing the Rays against the Phils in 08. Mm-hmm. He won a World Series with the, the Cubbies. Um, and, and Joe, both Joes were, were two of the first ones to really um, – take an interest and accept um, analytics as part of their managerial abilities um, with the belief is that sometimes both of them rely on it too much. Um, and that could be a big reason why they're, they're not doing so well anymore because I think I'm of the thought that analytics are all well and good, but you can't be all analytical in baseball. Baseball is so much well played from the gut as well as it is a numbers thing. And I think we let some managers let the numbers do everything and they forget about the gut, the internal, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, just instinct, knowing how to how to do certain things just on instinct. Yeah. Who cares about a launch angle? Put the ball into the gap and get someone on, on the, to first or stretch it out to a double and bring someone home from third. It's more about, oh, we, you need to hit it in this spot here because that's going to just hit the ball. Put the ball in play. Get someone on base. Yeah, because I, I know. Think too much that's forgotten about. Well, because I know the other night when I was watching the game, you just want, you know, I think it was the bases were loaded. I, I, I'm, I forget if the bases were loaded or two were on. And it's like, okay, just one good hit, just one good hit into the gap. That will bring home at least one, possibly two. You know, that, that's what was going through my mind. I mean, yes, everybody wants to see these home runs and all that, but you got to play smart. Well, and I mean, here's my thing. Bryce had a great night tonight, and he didn't hit a single home run, but he got on base and he moved runners by putting the ball in play. And that's, and that's the big thing, because once you start moving runners, runs will score. And, and to me, me personally, I like home runs as much as the next guy, but... Baseball to me is more exciting when people are stealing bases, people are bunting. You know, small ball is more exciting to me than hitting than seeing someone just crank dingers all night. I will agree with you on that one. 
I will definitely agree with you on that one. Just because you see these plays that, like you know, like the play at the plate, or a steal that that was close of you know safe or out. You know, just one of those things to where it's like, hey, did he get it? And base running is such an exciting skill to watch because it's more than just trotting the bases. If you're an, an elite base runner, you can swipe a bag every game. Or two. We saw it with Rollins. You know, fans in the 80s saw it with Ricky Henderson. It's a skill that's being lost because they're relying too much on on analytics and the long ball. Just put the ball in play and... I'm off my soapbox. Sorry. No, you're not. (laughs) We still have a second period to go yet. I know. (laughs) And that, I think, is going to be even a bigger soapbox. I... Anyway... (laughs) <laughs> we'll get to that in the second period. Oh, that's funny. That is funny. But yeah, I mean, with... I mean, so far, Phillies are doing great. Angels seem to got off their losing streak. So who knows what will happen from here? So on that note, that'd be the end of uh, the first period. Hey, we'll be real, right back. real quick here oh. before we go to the break. Uh, the game for game four of the NBA Finals, it is currently 81-79. The Celtics with 11 minutes in the game to go. Oh. This yeah, is that's... dated information by the time everyone's listening, but I felt pertinent to, to say it here. So after we can go to the break now. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We'll do that again. We'll be right back. For listeners of the Not Another Sports Podcast, if you visit fansidea.com and use the code NASPOD, N-A-S-P-O-D, at checkout, you will get 10% off your order. Fansidea.com is the place to go for custom-made jerseys, hoodies, shirts, and other gear. The perfect product with perfect stitching, perfect sublimation, and perfect embroidery. 100% handmade and delivered on time. That's certainty, and it's their promise to you, the customer. Again, use the code NASPOD, N-A-S-P-O-D, at checkout for 10% off your order. As you can see, if you're watching this on YouTube, I got my NASPOD sublimated t-shirt on. David's rocking his Flyers-inspired NASPOD hand-stitched hockey jersey. After seeing it in person, is absolutely amazing looking. Um, but go to fansidea.com to place your order today. <laughs> 